Hi, my name is Hare Krishna Menon. I'm a senior program manager in the Visual Studio team at Microsoft. Today, I'm going to show you an overview of the Azure IoT and mobile sample application, my driving, that was shown in the Scott Go keynote. At Build 2016, we showed a sample application that used car telemetry data to provide long-term insights as well as real-time insights and trends for customers. This used a whole bunch of our Azure services and our developer platform to achieve this. My driving provides a comprehensive starting point for a scalable, available, performant, and cross-platform IoT implementation. It brings together the best Azure developer platform and service offerings to demonstrate Microsoft's breadth and depth in this space. Services like Azure IoT Hub, Stream Analytics, Machine Learning, even Hubs, HD Insight, etc. were used in the solution. Furthermore, using Xamarin, Hockey App, and Visual Studio Team Services, we were able to build native applications for iOS, Android, and Windows. Even better, all the code is open sourced on GitHub, and you can go now and download the source. We have even provided scripts that use Azure Resource Manager templates for you to be able to deploy this whole service into your own subscription. Now let's take a look at the architecture of this my driving IoT and mobile sample application. First, there is an OBD sensor. This is the IoT in my driving. This is what an OBD sensor looks like. Most modern cars have this sensor, have a data link port for the sensor in the driver's cabin, and you can plug this into your car to get real-time car telemetry. Based on the model, make, and age of the car, you can get a number of data points like fuel consumption, RPM, speed, etc. One of the goals of this particular exercise for us was to make it easy for you as a developer to try this out at your house. So we wanted to use off-the-shelf readily available components. You can easily buy very cheap OBD sensors in Amazon or any other online retailer of your choice. To keep the cost low, what we have done is we have used the phone as the field gateway. All the data that the OBD generates is fed through the phone and into the Azure IoT Hub. The Azure IoT Hub takes all this data and feeds that through a number of analytics and other services into your Azure App Service. The Azure App Service acts as the backend for your mobile application. This mobile application is delivered to users and to you through Hockey App. Now let's talk about what sort of transformations happen to the data as it reaches IoT Hub. The first thing that happens is we have a number of streaming analytics queries and jobs that are running in Azure. What this does is it takes this data and transforms into different ways, both for hot as well as cold path, and feeds that into a SQL database that is then accessed by the Azure App Service. For example, in this instance, what you see on the screen is as we get the data, we send that to an event hub. There is a microservice that looks up the VIN number of your car. What it does, it compares your VIN number against a local database, make and model of your car, and determines what sort of car it is and sends that data into the SQL database used by your Azure App Service. Alternatively, we also have App Insights monitoring that is instrumenting our Azure App Service. This provides real-time monitoring for our developers on the state of that service. The second transformation I want to talk about is basically our cold path. Data is written into the blob storage. We have Azure Data Factory that spins up a number of jobs that takes this data, transforms it, and writes it into an analytics database. This data is used by our Power BI models to help customers visualize live as well as hourly data from the service. Finally, we have a machine learning component. What this does, it looks at driving habits of all the customers and tries to predict based on an average 
where you are with respect to the rest of the drivers in terms of your driving style. So for example, you might be rated as average, you might be rated as good, you might be rated as amazing, based on a lot of information that we collect through your driving experience. So this kind of ties up a number of scenarios that we want to showcase in the application. I have only mentioned a few, there's a lot more going on, and I would highly recommend that you take a look at our reference guide that I will show a link to at the end of the presentation to get a more detailed understanding of what goes on in the system. Now let's take a look at some cool demos around my driving. The first demo we're going to take a look at is how to use this my driving application. For that, I'm going to actually use my MacBook and I'm going to mirror the app from my iPhone into the MacBook so you can actually see me using the application. Let's take a look at how to use the app. So I'm going to open my hockey app on my iPhone, install my driving for iOS. I'm going to switch back to my screen and you can see the app is currently being installed. Now I'm going to try opening it. So it tells me that the enterprise developer certificate is untrusted. So I'm going to go ahead and trust it. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to general, profiles and device management, and trust the BitStadium certificate that we are using. I'm going to come back to my home screen and now open the application. We have a couple of get started screens that helps you understand what you need in order to connect the OBD device to your car. So I'm going to swipe through the different get started screens. For example, on an iPhone, you need a Wi-Fi OBD2 adapter. And if you go to our getting started documentation, you will figure out what models you need based on the device that you have in hand. Now, I'm going to go ahead and log in with Facebook. Once I'm logged in, I have to now allow my driving to track my location. Let's go take a look at all the past trips that I've done on this account. So I'm going to navigate to the past trip screen, and you can see that we bring up a beautiful list of all the previous trips that I've done using this application. So I'm going to take a look at the trip that I did today morning to work. At this point, we are fetching data from the Azure App Service. And you can actually scrub through your whole route as we speak. As you see on the top, it actually updates in real time to show what gallons, the amount of miles you have traveled, the time that you have taken, as well as the average speed at that time. Now I'm going to switch back and go look at my profile. This is an account that we use across the team, and you can see that I've traveled a total of 107 miles across the last one or two weeks or so, and you can see the number of hot acceleration, total trips, and the hot stops that I've done, as well as the total fuel consumption. Now let's go try recording a current trip. The first question that you might have is that, hey, I don't have an OBD adapter, I'm not in a car, but that is okay. We actually enabled you to use a simulated OBD device if you don't have that in your car. So I'm going to use a simulator, but when you use a simulator, we actually don't do any machine learning on the trips that you have done because it's a simulated data and we don't, that, we don't want that to pollute the rest of the data we have on the server. As you can see, uh, after a while, we can see the duration and everything actually turn up. We can literally walk around your house with the device and we'll record a, ran a simulated data stream for us to use. Now I'm going to stop this trip and name it. And you can see there's a trip summary, but I haven't really traveled. So the trip summary is pretty not that great. Now I can also go and check out my settings. In the settings screen, I can change my distance or capacity, change my permissions, and we have a whole bunch of useful links for you to navigate. I can even use the hockey app leave feedback function to send the feedback to us if you run into any issues or if you have any feedback around this whole application. Now that you have seen the app in action, let's take a look at how Visual Studio Team Services, 
hockey app, and Xamarin Test Cloud enables you to rapidly iterate during your development cycles. As a part of open sourcing all the scripts, we have also open sourced the build definitions. Our scripts will enable you to deploy these build definitions into your own VSTS account so that you can easily set up continuous integration for your own My Driving solution. In my dashboard, I can see the status of my iOS, Android, and UWP builds. To the right of that, I can see the status of my Xamarin Test Cloud run results. As soon as builds are completed, the iOS and Android versions kick off a Xamarin Test Cloud run, which tests on hundreds and thousands of real user devices to tell you about issues that you might face in production. Once the tests are passed, the build is then pushed by the release management component in VSTS into Hockey App, which is then distributed via a private gallery to all the testers. Now let's take a look at an actual CI in action. I'm gonna go back to my repository. I'm gonna make a tiny change in my code. Then I'm gonna commit those changes to my master. As soon as I commit this change, I'm gonna switch back into my iOS build definitions. I'm gonna click on Android, look at Qt, yeah, you can see that a build was just kicked off right now based on my check-in. So this is pretty awesome. As soon as I make a change into my source repository, a build is kicked off by VSTS. This is going to take a while. Let's take a look at the release management part of VSTS. I'm going to navigate to the release management page. You can see that we have three release management definitions for your Android, iOS, and UWP. Let's take a look at the Android version. I'm going to click on Edit. And you can see that, hey, we have a hockey app task that once a build and tests have passed successfully, takes a package and deploys it to a private gallery for my testers to take and try out the application. So this is a very seamless integration with hockey app and Xamarin Test Cloud. Now that we've seen the release management part of VSDS, let's take a look at the Xamarin Test Cloud instance. I'm going to switch to my Xamarin Test Cloud page, and you can see that I have run multiple tests on my regression test series. I'm going to click on, let's say, one of these test results. Once I open it, on the left side, I'm able to see all the tests that I've run. I'm going to click on a test, and you can see the test running on a number of devices. So this is pretty awesome. Xamarin Test Cloud enables you to test your applications on real life production devices that your customers use. Since we have integrated My Driving with Hockey App, we are also able to get real life user feedback as well as crash reports. Let's take a look at the dashboard for My Driving for Android. You can see that we have published a number of versions. You can see that we had one crash in the last seven days. 34 downloads, 18 unique users, and 175 sessions. The Hockey app enables me to monitor the real-time usage of my application as well as monitor for user feedback as, and crashes. And this helps me easily improve the quality and reliability of my application. Now that you've seen continuous integration, let's take a look at the heart and soul of my driving. That is the Azure services. We'll take a look at all the Azure dashboards, the service fabric instances, the Power BI visualizations, and finally, the machine learning model that powers my driving. As I mentioned before, we use a number of Azure services to stitch the scenario together. The first one is the Azure IoT Hub. At looking at dashboard, I can see that there were 3,199 messages sent and 9096 simulated and real devices. I can look at the results of my streaming job, my log jobs, the resource utilization on my SQL database, the status of my data factory jobs, the geo-replication of my particular service, as well as app insights data about server responses. So this is super useful. It enables me in one location to take a look at the status of all my Azure services that is powering my driving. Now let's take a look at the Service Fabric Explorer. 
As we mentioned before, we have a service fabric instance, which is a microservice that enables lookup of when applications. And I can look at the status of each of the nodes in the cluster. So this Fabric Explorer enables me to monitor the running and the usage of my microservice in real time. Now let's take a look at the Power BI dashboards that is powering the My Driving experience. As you can see, we have real data that is updated hourly that shows the current usage of the My Driving system. You can see the number of users, the average speed, the driver type that is good, bad, or moderate, and a whole lot of other information in my dashboard. I can also see based on area what the relative distribution of good, bad, and moderate drivers are. Now let's take a look at the My Driving Live dashboard. This shows real-time information as drivers send data into the system. I can actually zoom in and look at information as they come in. I can look at the average speed of drivers on the system, the average RPM, trip length, engine load versus speed, etc. as the data is coming in real time. So this is pretty amazing. I'm able to use Power BI to visualize real-time insights of the users using my solution. Now let's finally, let's take a look at the machine learning dashboard. We have a machine learning model that takes in all the incoming data and figures out what bucket users generally fall into and assigns them a rating. This is our training experiment and this is our predictive experiment. So this is running currently in Azure and this runs on a daily cadence and updates the user rating at the end of the day and once a day. This sums up all the different dashboards and services that we can use to visualize the status of our Azure services of the My Driving solution. As a part of open sourcing My Driving, we have also written a number of scripts to make it easy for you to deploy the entire My Driving, the Azure services, the build definitions, and the source code into your own Azure subscriber account as well as your VSTS accounts. We are going to show a quick demo of how you can use Azure PowerShell to take all the ARM templates that we have created and deploy that into your subscription. If you go to the scripts folder, once you clone the My Driving repository, you can see a whole bunch of scripts, both PowerShell for Windows machines and Bash for Mac that you can use to deploy these solutions into your own subscription. I'm going to go into my PowerShell instance and I'm going to use the deploy script that's available in the PowerShell folder to deploy a My Driving instance into my own subscription. Please note that I've pre-configured this to take my subscription details. So for me, all I have to do is run the deploy.ps1, pass in the region name, like let's say West US, and give a name to my resource group. So I'm going to call it My Driving new and hit enter. At this point, it retrieves all my Azure subscription information and starts creating the resources for me in my subscription. This should take about anywhere between five to 10 minutes before all the resource groups are running and the script finishes execution. As a part of the script, it also deploys my machine learning instance and also gives me a chance to put in my VSTS account and subscription details so it automatically checks out my driving source from our public repository, checks into your own private repository and sets up the build definitions for you. And that is an optional step that you might want to do. So you can see we make it super easy for you to take the entire my driving solution and with a single command on the Windows machine, deploy the whole my driving solution into your own subscription. Now that you have seen us deploying it in our own subscription, the first question that might come to your mind is how much is this going to cost me? The cost of running in the subscription is actually not that bad. We did some estimates. If you look at it, for around 100 users with four trips per day, we estimate it's going to cost you around $157. 
which is well within the reach of the free Azure credits that you receive when you sign up for a new Azure account. So please go ahead and try this out today. Now that you've seen my driving in action, I would highly recommend that you visit the URL that is shown on the screen right now and get started. We have extensive documentation. We have reference guides that tell us how we went about building this application. We have open sourced all of our code. It'll help, it'll make it super easy for you to try it out or even deploy your own my driving solution to your own Azure and VSTA subscriptions. On behalf of my team, I would like to thank you for watching this session, and I hope you have an amazing time building and trying out my driving on your own. Thank you.